By now, most of us would have heard of the artificial sun in China. It set a temperature record. It reached temperatures of five times that of the sun. There was no launch. Many reports claimed that this was launched and there are fake videos going around, but nothing was launched. This artificial sun is an experimental nuclear reactor which broke the record. The reactor superheated a loop of plasma to 70 million degrees Celsius, which is five times hotter than the core of the sun, and it maintained this temperature for over 17 minutes. This was the longest sustained nuclear fusion reaction on Earth so far. Traditional reactors that we use today are fission reactors, where a heavy atom splits into two or more lighter atoms. More accurately, a heavy nucleus splits into lighter nuclei, releasing energy in the process. But in this fusion reactor that China used, energy will one day hopefully be generated by fusion, much like it is inside stars. Two lighter nuclei combine to form a heavier nucleus while releasing energy in the process. Therefore, the name artificial sun. In this video, we'll look at how this experiment was performed and how fusion reactors work. I'm Sandhya Ramesh and this is Pure Science. The basic premise of nuclear energy is that atomic dynamics and interactions are harnessed and energy is created, which we can then use to power the world around us. Fission, named after the binary fission in cell division, is where an atom splits into smaller particles. For this process, a large but unstable isotope of an atom is needed. An isotope is an atom with the same number of protons but a different number of neutrons in the nucleus. For example, uranium-235, which is an isotope of uranium, is commonly used in fission reactors. Within these reactors, the unstable isotope is bombarded with high-speed particles, typically high-speed neutrons. When they slam into the atom and more specifically the nucleus, they cause it to break into smaller particles. These for uranium-235 are typically the fission products or two smaller isotopes of uranium, three high-speed neutrons and vast amounts of energy that we harness. This heats water in the reactor and produces electricity. In this process, the high-speed neutrons that are released bombard other nuclei and this process carries on, causing a chain reaction. Fusion, on the other hand, takes place when two low-mass isotopes combine to form a higher-mass nucleus under extreme pressure and temperature. This process needs enough time to produce plasma in a reactor and plasma is one of the four fundamental states of matter after solid, liquid and gas. It is supercharged gas to where it's no longer a gas but is primarily made up of charged particles that is ions and electrons. On Earth, plasma is generated through many sources. Neon lights, for example, use filaments and gases confined to a tube. As electricity flows through the filament, it charges the gas around it and converts it to plasma. This plasma then glows a certain color depending on the gas that's inside. But in a nuclear reactor, the temperature and pressure needs to be maintained high enough for plasma to first generate and then within this plasma for fusion reactions to occur. So the temperature needs to be maintained for a very long time. The fusion process typically uses isotopes of hydrogen. Just like hydrogen atoms in the sun and other main sequence stars combine under pressure and temperature to form helium, the hydrogen isotopes of hydrogen fuse together in the superheated plasma in these reactors to form a helium isotope and a single neutron. And of course, this process releases lots and lots of energy. For this fusion to occur, the atoms have to overcome the electrostatic force that pushes them apart when they come close to each other. In the sun, there is enough pressure to achieve this and forcefully push the atoms together. But on Earth, we can't create that kind of pressure. So we give the atoms increased kinetic energy to be able to bombard into each other. We do this by raising the temperature. 
the sun's core is about 15 million degrees celsius whereas the plasma used in this reactor reached 70 million degrees and this temperature was sustained for 17 minutes the longer the temperature sustains the more easily fusion takes place in the plasma generating energy Fusion reactors essentially replicate the environment and conditions that are found inside the core of stars. And this is not easy to achieve by humans. The most common design for these reactors is something called the tokamak, a Russian word. This uses a very powerful magnetic field to confine plasma inside a secure chamber that is shaped like a torus or a donut. These were first conceptualized by Soviet scientists back in the 50s and the design has been improved over the next couple of decades. But these reactors are also not really easy to build because they're extremely expensive because of the kind of temperatures that they have to reach. In November of 1985, the International Thermonuclear Experimental Reactor or ITER began to be designed after approval. Construction began in 2013 in southern France for this project. This is in fact the biggest fusion project on Earth and it is also one of the most expensive science projects of all time. The projected costs for this are expected to go up to $65 billion. By contrast, the Large Hadron Collider had a final cost of about $10 billion. But then the International Space Station costed $150 billion. ITER will be ready to begin work by the end of 2025, that is what is projected for now, and India is actually also a member of this project. It is a collaboration between 35 member countries. There are a handful of other fusion projects around the world and more that are being proposed right now. This Chinese experiment was conducted by the Experimental Advanced Superconducting Tokamak, or the EAST project. It is actually a sandbox or a testbed for ITER technologies as China is also a member of the ITER project. The total cost for this EAST project was in fact even higher. It apparently costed China $943 billion to build. This project has previously set other records like reaching a temperature of 120 million degrees for 101 seconds. It also reached 160 million degrees for 20 seconds. But the latest reaction that reached 70 million was sustained for 17 minutes. The experiment is set to run until June of this year. Everything we have today are still experiments not yet ready to run and generate energy, but they soon will be. Nuclear energy from fusion is much greener and more efficient than, of course, fossil fuels are, but it is also more efficient than fission. It produces no greenhouse gases and it produces no radioactive waste. There are also no meltdowns and theoretically it can produce unlimited energy. Just like hydrogen fuel, fusion energy is also touted to be the ultimate energy for the future. And from the latest developments in this world, it seems we are one step closer to getting there.